Okay, to finish up chapter four. Okay, they talk about variables and parameters are local. Well, there's something called local and there's something called global. Okay? It says when you create a variable inside of a function, it exists inside the function. That's it. Okay, let's make one. I'm going to bring up this program I found the other day called Idle. Hopefully, you've all seen it before. I'm going to start a new file. And I'm going to call it, um, let's call it, I'm going to put it on my desktop so I can find it. I keep saying that each day so you guys do the same so you can find it. I'll just do local. Just call it local. Okay? Good enough. All right. I need to create a method or a function. How do I start making a function, anybody? DEF. I'm going to call it something unique, like unique. Like that? Just in case it's a reserved word, I'm going to put F-U-N, unique fun at the end. I'm going to pretend it takes an argument. I just haven't written that yet because I'm thinking on the fly here. Okay. Um, this program, uh, let's see, A equals 5. Okay. So far, so good. Everybody with me? My typing's slow enough. Just, just check it. Slow down a little. I'm going to compile it and make sure it actually works. Did it work? Yeah, I didn't tell it to do anything, so it's working perfectly. All right, so over here, I'm going to say print. I say A, let's say A, I say A from inside. I spelled it wrong. Uh, did that wrong too? That's a comma. A from inside. So in other words, I'm going to print the value of A from inside the function. Easy enough? So, I'm done. That's my whole function. It's pretty awesome, I know. So I'm going to call it. How do I call this method or function? How do I run it? Give it the name. That's it. Done. Let's run it. A from inside is 5. Again, I gave it the string, a from inside, and I did a comma a, so it took the value 5 and printed the a. That a is local to that function. I'm going to get down here. We know it works. I say print a from outside. Okay. Do you agree I'm outside the function now? The function's at the top. I'm outside of it down here. It's not what happens when I run it. It's like name A is not defined. What do you mean it's not defined? Well, it's defined inside this function. It's not defined outside the function. So this A down here has, it's like, what the heck are you talking about? Well, let's fix that. I'm going to go right here before all this and say A equals 6. So what is it going to print now? It's going to print two things. What is it going to be? What's it going to print first? A from inside, 5. But I just told it it's 6. So when you do the outside, it's 6. But why isn't it saying 6 to begin with? Because inside of the unique fun, I'm giving it a 5. So when I run this, it should say 5 and then 6. Let's see. It does. See that? Let's go one step farther. I'm going to pass a to my method, I'm going to receive A. What's it going to print now? You don't have any parameters, so how is it supposed to 
Well, I passed it right here. Oh, never mind. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, I got an A. So I'm passing A. So what am I passing? The value of 6. Do you agree? Well, I am. I'm passing A, which is 6. I'm passing 6 to my method or function. I keep messing up. Whatever the heck they call it in this one. So this A up here is then what? At this point. Right at this point, six. it's six, because I passed it a six. Remember? Then what happens here? Then it becomes five, so it prints a five. So what does it print here? I thought we just made it a five. Well, let's see what it does. Inside five, outside six. Do you see how that works? Okay, what if now what's it going to print? Because now I'm actually changing the value of A inside the function. An 8 and then a what? Why not 8? Why not 8, 8? Well, the reason is Okay, A is local to this function. When I receive the A up here, it's a totally new variable. Okay? So even though I'm passing A here, I'm really passing the value that's assigned to A, which in this case is 6. So I'm receiving A, brand new A, totally new A. Think of it like I got two containers. I got a container, and Natalie's got a container. They're identical containers. I, I pass my container to Natalie, we dump it into her container. It's the exact same container. But now if she adds something to it, her container, what happens to my container? She's not adding it to mine. Mine stays the same. Okay? So even though we're passing the 6 down here, we're really passing the value of 5. I'm sorry, value of A, which is 6. We receive the value of 6 into A. Then we increase it to 8. We print 8. But this A never changed. So we should get 8 and 6. That's called local. I could have called this anything I wanted. AA, AA, whatever. You know, they all just have to match up here. This will prove to you that it's not the same A. It's a different variable. Okay. All right. That's local. So AA now is local to this method or function. Jeez, I, can't, I can't do anything else with it. Now, what if I was to say return AA? We think. So what if down here, if I said A equals, what am I going to get now? Eight and eight. Let's see. Is it like hot in this building today? Yes. Okay. That was just me. I was been running around. I'm just hot. It's like, man, it's toasty. Okay, eight and eight. Reason is. Okay, I take this A, the value, I assign, this is my assignment operator, I assign the value of 6 to A, I pass A to this method, or function, whatever. So it comes up here, and that 6 gets stored in AA. AA now becomes 8. Everybody with me? We print out 8. Then I return the value of AA, which is 8. And I return it, so this function is now returning a value into A. So in other words, I'm assigning A this new value, then I'm printing it out. I could assign it to something else. I could assign it to B. Then if I wanted to see it, I could put a B there. And now it should print 8, 6, 8. You agree? I'm guessing. I haven't run it yet. Let's see. 8, 6, 8. 
because my method or function returned an 8. So I received that 8 from that function and assigned it to B. So when I printed A, that still hadn't changed at 6, then B is 8. So print 6, 8. So far, so good? Easy enough? Everybody getting this? It's very critical you understand local. Okay? Now I'm going to try something. Do not know if it's going to work. So just hold on for a second. Um, I'm just going to get rid of this. Comment that out. Don't change yours yet. I, just, I don't know if this is going to work. Uh, I want to see what this does. Don't know if it's going to work. No, it doesn't work. Darn it. Wait. Oh, hold on. I mean, delete that. No, I can't do it. Okay. I wasn't sure because certain. Certain languages you can do that. Actually, let me try something here. I still don't think it's going to work. But it might. No, it doesn't. Okay. So disregard that part. That part doesn't work. See, that's what sucks. You get all these languages and one does something. And, you know, so that was a, so disregard that part. It didn't work. So. All right. Um, so we talked about local. We kind of did a thing where A is not defined. We talked about that already. They're going to change the turtles tomorrow. I don't think we're going to do the turtles today, sorry. I know, you're de all depressed. But what they're showing here is you don't have to just pass numbers. You can actually pass colors. You can ask titles. You can pass anything you want. As long as your method definition, in other words, your header up here, matches your call. So if you have one thing inside here, like an A, you better have something down here. In other words, one and one, or two and two. They have to match. They have to match number and type. Okay? In other words, if I'm expecting a string up here, I can't pass a number. So that was some of the problems I had yesterday. All right. Every okay, I'm doing that. Pretty simple. Now, I promised you that we would do a little bit with flowcharts today. Are we excited or what? I know it. Now, you know what? I forgot to open up what to submit today. So I guess there's nothing to submit today. Darn it. Sorry, I was busy. Nope. You're just doing it anyway. Now, I might have you submit flowchart, though. So I told you I got my watch Monday. Did I tell you all that? Brand new watch with cellular that does not work. Yes. Oh. I proved it did not work. So I called Apple. No, I'm sorry. I called AT&T. What now? Has cellular. And an altimeter as well. But I called AT&T. And the dude's like, I've been on the phone the entire day working with Apple Watches. He goes, there's a problem. We know it. We can't fix it. So he's like... I got nothing. He goes, your account set up correctly. I can't do anything for you. It's literally, I got nothing. So I'm like, so I said, so you got a free month service? I got that. I said, good. So he gave me a free month service. So then I happened to get an email from Apple. Hey, how you liking your new device? We're going to give you 30 minutes of personalized service with us to help set up your new device. Says, Sign me up. What do you need help with? This is to fix my cellular. So the lady calls me a few minutes later. So what do you need? Oh, how do you like it to watch this? So it don't work. It doesn't. So we walked through all the stuff. And obviously I've had them forever since they came out with version one. I know how to use a watch. And she's like, oh, I don't understand. So she finally, after 20 minutes, gets on the phone with her supervisor. She comes back on. Well, sir, it seems there's a problem with the cellular. It's not working. Imagine that. <laughs> and uh, we're aware of the problem. It should be fixed soon. I said, okay. We're getting your watch back. So that is. That's funny. Okay. I brought up PowerPoint. You do not have to do this in PowerPoint. You can do this in Word. You can do it in Google Sheets. You can do it in Google Docs. You can do it in 
about anything. I'm just going to do an example in PowerPoint. Okay. I'm going to. Okay. How do we start our program? Natalie, you did it last time. What was it? Start. Very good. So I'm going to insert a symbol over here, and I'm going to insert. Normally, we have a circle for that. Now, when you have it, you can actually go into like the shape fill here and set the fill to nothing. You can also go into the outline and set it black. You can also go into styles and set it too. But um, so, like, I could just click on that and get that style. I could click on it and make it blue. I could click on whatever the heck I wanted to click on. Okay. Then in the text box, I can click in there and say start. Yes. I want start to be bigger, so I'm going to click on it. Then I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to say font needs to be 60. All right, I'm going to go back over here now since I still have it. And where did I do insert my shapes? Come on. I want the design. That's what I want. No, that's not what I want. Where's my... Here's the one where, okay, I inserted the shape. Why can't I change it? Disregard that. That's what I want. Oh, it's on the format tab. Okay. It's on the wrong tab. I'm not inserting another shape yet. I'm going to click on this, go to the format tab, and I like it to be bold. Okay. There we go. I got my start. So with every start, we should have a... Good. Now I can go through the same thing. I can sort of the new shape. I can set its color. I can set all that. Or I can copy this one. Copy. Control C, then Control V. Then copy it and put it down here. I'm going to change it. Up. I'm going to click inside and change it. If I can ever click inside. There it goes. End. Sweet. So far, so good? Okay. All right, now I want to get some input. I want to ask the question, I need to determine, do I need my umbrella today? Okay? So how am I going to do this? Anybody? What would the, probably be the first thing I need to do? Ask a Right. Ask a question. What type of symbol do we need to do that? Anybody? We have a squiggly line. We could use a star. I think we could use a Pac-Man down here somewhere. Or a rectangle. rectangle. Probably a rectangle would be a good choice. Okay. I'm going to put mine up here just because I want to. I'm just going to click on my predefined styles. And I'm going to make this one blue. I'm going to make my weight of my line thick. So you can see it. I'm going to click on my text box. I'm going to say, is it raining? I could also say prompt for is it raining or print is it raining. But when working with a flow chart, when I have that type of symbol, it's kind of like a given. That is a process symbol. Okay? So I'm asking the question, is it raining? So what should happen after I say, is it raining? Anybody? Yeah, I need to get input for a yes or no or something. So let's see what kind of symbol we could possibly add for that. We could add a flag. We could potentially add an XOR symbol. We could add an X. Or we could also add like a diamond. What do you think? Probably the diamond would be a good choice if I could find it. Oh, maybe down here under flowchart. There's actually a section in PowerPoint called flowchart. So I'm going to put my diamond right there. And I'm going to same color. I want it to have the same weight just so it's pretty. Okay. So, all right. Now, this is the part that's kind of weird. I'm going to put my text box in there. Uh, is it raining? It's like yes or slash no or something, okay? It's kind of the same kind of 
but we're not really prompting this time. Now we're actually going to process the results of it. Oh, wait, I didn't get the input, did I? Oh, I put the wrong one. My bad. We missed one. What did I miss? Still need that. But, but I, I still need that symbol, but I need something first. I missed it, sorry. What do I need, anybody? I need arrows too. I haven't got there yet. What's what other type of symbol do I need after this rectangle and before the diamond? I know. I'll show you. We need this guy. We need this symbol. This is the input output symbol. I totally forgot to get the input. Because we asked the question, is it raining? But we never got input for it. So I technically, over here, could just say, input raining. You really don't need the word input since this is an input output symbol. But by adding it there, you know, and I also, that font's too small. So I'm going to click on start. I'm going to go over here, whatever I did, click wrong. I'm going to go over here to home. I'm going to click on this thing, this little paintbrush called Format Painter, and I'm going to click on this font. Oh. oh. Okay, I'm going to click on this guy. Oh, no. This guy. Fine, click on this. If I double click it, I can just click one word after the other. I can do them all at the same time. All right. Nice. You like that? Probably a little big. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking it's a tad bit big. So I'm going to bring it down to maybe a 40. And let's see if I can. Wow, that's like crazy big. Fine, so it's a little big. And let's change this to a 40. Let's change this guy. Actually, now I'm going to highlight one of his words. If you double click that, now I can just select all this. Oh yeah, much better. Okay. So now I can actually make him a little bit longer, and I can make him a little bit longer. So technically, this one is just raining now. Okay. And I could do something like raining is equal to yes. Why am I doing that? Does anyone know why? Well, I need to fix one more thing first. So someone already mentioned what's missing. What's missing? Arrows. Arrows. We, we don't have any flow lines at this point. We're kind of everywhere with our program. So over here, I can do insert. I'm going to add an arrow. Now, once you click Add Arrow, you'll notice this thing lights up. I'm going to click there and bring it over there. Got an arrow. I want it to be red because red's cool. I want it to be six. And I'm going to copy that arrow, paste it, and dump that arrow over here. I'm going to connect him to him, and I'm going to connect him to him. The reason I did that now I can actually, oh, seriously, it didn't connect? There we go, now it connected. All right, see, now I can actually move the shape. My arrow stays connected, see? Isn't that handy? So I'm going to connect this. I'm going to copy him and paste him again. I'm going to bring him to here, put it right there. I'm going to bring this down to this guy right there. And I can move this guy somewhere. Let's put him right there. Again, mine's way too big. I'm doing this just so y'all can see it really easily. Obviously, you wouldn't have a 60-point font on yours. So, now we need something. This is called the decision structure. So, I'm asking the question... It's raining equal to yes. Do you see how that's working? So if it's equal to yes, what should I do, you think? Bring, bring an umbrella. So I'm going to move it over here. Just so I have more room. That's the only reason I moved it. 
and put shape. I'm going to bring my rectangle. Again, that's a process symbol. I can actually click on this rectangle right here and go to Home, Format Painter, and format this rectangle the same way. So you can format text and symbols and everything. Okay, that's the little paintbrush looking dude up there. Okay. If you've never used the Format Painter, it is a lifesaver. Okay, so over here, I'm gonna, I don't think I can just click in the middle. No, I can't. I'm going to go insert text. No, it's under format. Format, format. Format text. Bring umbrella. Okay. Then, you know what? I like that box, so I'm going to copy it. And do copy, paste. Then down here, I'm going to say no umbrella. Okay. Now what do I need? An arrow or two maybe? So I'm going to copy this guy. I'm going to bring this arrow down here. I'm going to connect him to there. I'm going to connect him to bring my umbrella. I'm going to need another one. Put him here. Or there. Now, if they're connected right, I should be able to move these around, which I can, which is good. Yeah. All right, do I need anything else? Missing something in the middle there. Okay, you're kind of, yeah, you're both in the right way. Which one's yes, which one's no? Or true, false? So why don't I take me a text box down here and say yes? Wow, that is like teeny tiny. Going to make it about 40 so y'all can see it. As long as I'm labeling my flow lines. Copy and paste that. So raining is equal to yes. So if that's true or yes, you could also say, you know, true. This one could be false. Either way, it's fine. You could write out the word false. I don't care. So if it's raining equals yes, if that is a true statement, I bring my umbrella. Then if raining equal yes ends up being false, no umbrella. So are we done with this? Not quite. What are we missing? Yeah, I mean, we got this end guy hanging out over here with nothing. So I need to somehow connect no umbrella to end and bring umbrella to end. So if there was only a way, if there was only a symbol that I could do that with. Yep, how about this guy right here? So now I'm going to connect umbrella. No, I'm bringing it all the way over here to end. See that? That was hard. I'm going to make him red and big so you can see him. You know, it's kind of, kind of big. Should be a way to manipulate him. I can bring him out. I can't bring him down, seriously? You suck. There, we'll connect. Let's connect him here. Wow, he's he's tough to move around here. So we're going to make him a different color so he can tell. Yeah, he don't want to bend where he's supposed to bend. There you go. Yeah, see, it's because my stuff's too big and it's kind of right in the way here. Normally you wouldn't, you'd put like, and actually, you know what, we could do that. Hold on. We could put an end over here in the corner. 
and we can make it very tiny. And we could connect this guy back over to here and connect this guy to there. Oh, yeah. Solved it. So we're done? No, we need one more. Insert, shape, same kind of arrow. We're going to go from this guy over to this guy. And I like that arrow right there, so I'm going to click on him, and I'm going to format painter him and paste him on top of this arrow. Ta-da! Is it the prettiest in the world? No. But does it work? Okay. That's pretty much what you guys need to do. The only thing we're missing is the loop. I think you got a thing, is he over 16? So in here you'd say something like, no umbrella, go back and start. you could do that. You could say no umbrella, go back and ask a question, and you're exactly right. Then you literally could take this guy right here, bring him all the way back up to here, potentially. So if there's no umbrella, go back again. So it'll literally be asking forever until it's raining again, which is kind of what we do. Is it raining? No. Is it raining? No. Oh, yes, bring umbrella, we're done. So, kind of, that's kind of a loop there. But what you guys, I'm going to move them out of here so he's out of the way. Put him back to here for now. All you guys are going to use guys and girls. My age is greater than 16, correct? And age is less than 32. Is that what it is? Yes. Will that do it? 33. 33? Okay. And then what you can have... If age is between those two, you can have a, you are clear to join the Coast Guard instead of bring umbrella. If the answer is no, go to another thing. Age is whatever, less than 16, you're too young or whatever. So you just have more diamonds. Easy enough to do? Nothing difficult about it at all. When you do this, you know, last night when I was writing those scripts, when I was calculating the index of coincidence, I wanted to make sure they worked. So I literally sat there with a calculator and with a pad. You can look at my desk. It's still sitting there. Okay, if I got two A's, so I did the math, and I added them all up and made sure it was correct. Do the same with here. Like one of you, I think maybe it was Nathan, I don't know, came to see me, and we walked through. Okay, I'm 15. Okay. Okay, I'm 15 up. It doesn't meet that. Just fall, walk through with each thing it could possibly be and see if it makes sense. That's all you got to do. Make sense? Everybody okay with that? Flow charts are simple. You just got to use the right symbols. Obviously, start. This is really called the connector symbol. This one is really the process symbol. Print. Stuff like that. Call another method. Well, sometimes. But input's always a parallelogram. That's input output. So if you're going to print something, you would use this same symbol right here. Actually, this is really for getting input. This would be the printing. But, you know. um, then you got your decision structure, and it's pretty easy stuff. All right? Any questions on any of this? Any questions on methods or functions? Kind of understand those? Because you'll be using those a whole bunch. Like I showed you in mine, I literally went from 1 to 50 just by changing one little number in a loop that called a method 50 times. So nice. Okay? If you guys have no questions, you can go out here early today. Isn't that terrible? And, and you don't have to submit nothing. That's like bonus, bonus. You go to Sonic and buy some corn dogs. With a gift card. With a gift card. <laughs> <laughs> and hope your credit card doesn't get stolen. You know, I was speaking to those kids this morning about that. So, it's kind of pertains to all of you. So, I'm going to use Natalie as an example. Natalie, you ever been to Sonic? Yeah. Okay. 
Because then Natalie went to Sonic in the last month and got her credit card stolen. What does Natalie do? First of all, I wouldn't care. I wouldn't freak out. Think about it. My Discover card was stolen for seventeen thousand dollars. Was it a credit card or a debit card? It was a credit card. Debit card, different story. Credit card, who cares? I called the Discover card and I literally said, first of all, they called me. They called me and they're like, um, did your wife just go to Sears and Dillard's and Montgomery Wards and is she currently at Lowe's? I'm like, no, actually at that point she was actually at the hospital getting an iron transfusion. I'm like, I'm like 99% sure she's got a needle in her arm right now. <laughs> so I drove over there and sure enough she had a needle in her arm. So they said, all right, no big deal. So what do you think they did with all them charges? They're gone. They delete them. Done. Give me a new card. Finished. No stress off me. Now, about two months later, they did call me. And they're like, hey, there is a charge on here from Sam's gas station, Sam's Club gas station, that I used to go to a lot. It, it kind of looks like one of your charges that came through late. I said, yep, that's me. So they put it back in my card. But don't worry about it. They steal your card. Who cares? You're not responsible. Now, if it's a debit card, and they get your card and your PIN, they can drain you dry. But if you use a debit card as a credit card, you're fine. Unless you have maybe federal. What? Unless you have maybe federal. Oh, I don't know about them. But. They'll, uh, they'll give you that money back, debit cards. So. Oh, nice, nice. Don't ever use a debit card. Okay, here's the way these work. I, Always use the debit card as a credit card. Use your debit card for one thing, ATM withdrawals. Everything else use as a credit card. Because, here, here's why. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording. It really doesn't pertain to everybody.